We'll take our money, gets us up to 900. We're going to take four reputation all the way up to almost level three. We'll break this down. Flip this tile. Discard pile. And we are going to go after this garden maze. So this garden maze I like because it's only going to require me because I have 900 and I need 1,000, 200 plus 800. I need 1,000, so it only costs me two. I, I want to try to get to level three next turn. Gives me a good value tile. I'll grab my reminder token and I take my 900. Put it there. Very pleased about that. We roll off oh, right into all my people. And we roll a 20. So a victory point card comes over to this player. Now normally I would have the what I'm going to bring up on the screen. I would have my AI card to sort of be the marker for where I keep both monuments and victory point cards. But that's going to count towards their end. But it's not going to result in a purchase from the market. So it's not going to scavenge something that I might have wanted. So we're here at the Grand Ball, and the Grand Ball does not refer to an activity that's actually going to take place in our turn, like substitute for a normal turn. We're going to have a normal turn on this square. What the Grand Ball refers to is, um, it is a, a local event that took place this season. So if you remember from the glossary, anybody who was a masochist and actually read through all those pages, I talk about how each one of these rounds is actually a couple of months. And, and, and so a season which was three rounds could even be longer than a year. It doesn't quite align with the calendar season. It's the slow pace of life in the mid-19th century. And what happened there was there was a, uh, quite a, uh, a reputable estate nearby, but not so nearby, not in our little corner of Derbyshire, uh, you know, a little ways away where there was a, a, a really grandiose event. All the competitive families went to it, and as a result, we formed acquaintances. And so what we do on the Grand Ball is that we were properly introduced to several prestige guests, and we get to look at three and keep one. This is a balancing mechanism with a little bit of a theme in the Grand Ball, and the balancing mechanism is to ensure both in Tableau Obsession and here, that we have reasonable access to prestige guessing. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I guess we, we really heard the call here. She's really compelling. They're all compelling. She's the most compelling. I'm going to take her. Uh, and these two go to the bottom of the deck. And so she now goes into our hand, of which I don't have a hand because I'm going to have to pass. So this was the grand ball. On the grand ball turn, it's now a normal turn. I'm going to go ahead, rotate my service, but lo and behold, I'm going to pass. So I'm going to shift my service all the way down. I'm going to collect my deck, let them join that lovely prestige guest. Take my reputation, almost forgot. That's why we have that guy there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hire on my pass. One way to get to my rows on my butler's room I'm, I can essentially pass and do an activity on this turn. That's great news. And I'm eyeballing some action here. I want to get her to use that new uh, to use that new guest that I just became acquainted with. And I think as well, wow. I'm going to go with a lady's maid. I've got the under butler to help me with the gentlemanly tasks in service, but I have a feeling I've got a lot of ladies and I'm going to come up against it. So as much as I would have liked to have taken the head housemaid and screened some guests, I'm going to take the ladies maid. So that's the end of my turn. I have no money to make a purchase. That doesn't stop the AI from scavenging. And the AVI rolls a 17. That's bad news for us because if you look here, that's 15 through 18. They're going to get darn, that is one I really target because these these can be hard to play. I really wanted that. That now goes over into the scoring tableau 
for our AI. That's painful. That one's painful right there. Now we go to the next turn. So I rotated my service. I did not take my monument reputation. I'm going to take it there. I am going to be hosting in the main gazebo that wonderful new guest because Mrs. Puggins' larded oysters are in the future for Anne, the Dowager Countess of Bristol. And I'm delighted to have her come to the gazebo. And she is going to be joined by money. Always by money when I can get my hands on it in this game. So we have a nice event here. Um, if I take a look, we have 200 pounds. Not enough probably to make a purchase, but I'm going to double check that. We are going to pick up two reputation, one, two. So we are now flipping over to level three. And then we come... Then we come over here. Oh, we got one more reputation. Mrs. Puggins brings reputation. Obviously, for those who are unaware, inviting a fourth, uh, a four prestige rating guest to what I was at was two was made possible by the cook. And that was the reason I acquired the cook on my past turn. And so now we have a prestige invite. Oh, my. Be still, my beating heart. Kenneth Viscount Ashwood. Is that Ashwood? I think it is. 500 pounds. Boy, can't find a better guest in this game of solo estate challenge. So we're going to go ahead and break this down. Flip that over. I'm going to do something that's really, really... I haven't done this before in playing this. I'm going to go for two low-value tiles in my column here. The reason I'm going to do this is that I, I feel I need... I don't, have a, I don't have a tile to play if I don't buy this tile. And this tile is pretty versatile, and I can have the Viscount Ashwood come because Mrs. Puggins will be in the servants' quarters, and thank you, thank you for that. So I just feel that even though it's not going to score very well for my tableau, it's going to be efficient as far as gaining roses, and I can get the money from Viscount Ashwood as opposed to to getting the what I would like to get there would have been the billiards room, which would have been a, a higher, uh, a, a big money tile. So that's done. We have a scavenge now. We have a five. We come here and we go one, two, three. They take the billiards room. So <laughs> I don't feel so bad now having, uh, having just filled up this column here with a certain strategy. And now we go to the national holiday. And you know what? I didn't plan for that. Shame on your developer. Um, shame. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go to the riding stables on the national holiday. You know, even though I'm, pl I'm going basically out to uh, ride a horse on the, on the national holiday, I certainly like what I came up with. Had my underbutler because I did not have the footman available. I had the underbutler step up there. Actually, I did have the footman. I could have taken him from service. Now, here's I'm going to do something here. You're going to scratch your head because my deck does not have a prestige guest in it. This here, even though it's not necessary for the national holiday, he, the, forgetting about the national holiday, I was going to use the cook to get uh, Ashwood here. But I still get a reputation. Why not take it? Because I need to uh, get additional prestige guests before the cook is going to be meaningfully used. So I like that. So, Ian, look at this play. The young lady is being seen with a very reputable prestige guest, so she gets her admirer bonus. First, let's get our money. That's 700 pounds. Click my... Oh, did I forget my reputation? I certainly did for my, for my uh, monument. So we got 700 pounds. We have an invite from the young lady. Let's see what she has. Ah, well, my first card I ever made. John Ambrose. I like him. And we have uh, two reputation coming from that admirer bonus, which is nice. It pops us up to four. Oh, and I forgot one reputation from Mrs. Puggins. Love the Mrs. Puggins. 
Very good. Liked that turn a lot. It was it wasn't great given that it was the national holiday. Sometimes in this game, for that first national holiday, if you go to the second one, you're in trouble. But for that national holiday, if if you go for a play, if you spend your money on a on a monument, you may not have one of those high end tiles that you typically like for a national holiday. So I have seven hundred to spend. Let me give this some thought. I'm going for my second favorite tile of all time, The Cabinet of Curiosities, which is a great book if you haven't read it. <laughs> um, Cabinet of Curiosities is going to cost me $800. It's got a $100 premium in the $700 uh, prestige stack. I have $700. I am going to have to take a painful dive down to a 3, but I do know that the start of next turn I'll be back up to 4 because of that monument. So if I need a 4, I'm going to have it start of next turn. We're going to have a scavenging action here, and we have a three, and that's going to be the top tile out of the sporting stack, a tennis court. Put that over there. Well, after our underwhelming national holiday, we're going to go ahead and rotate service over here. I'm going to pick up that point of reputation that uh, pushed me below level four so we're going to get back to a level four and this is actually going to be critically important because it's going to allow me to play this cabinet of curiosities because i have a very useful useful man who's going to go over and help finalize that renovation and give me a temporary lowering of that prestige rating i'm going to provide service with the footman we're going to grab i don't have very good guests in my deck. I'm going to have to pass pretty soon for one final push. I can pick up a couple hundred pounds. I'm going to go ahead and use the cook for the same reason as before to get that extra point of reputation since my deck is not producing any um, any high level guests. So we get 200 pounds. That's really, this is a problem. I'll talk about it in a second. But the good news is that we get seven reputations. So we come over here, five reputation is one level, six, seven. So put that at the bottom. So we're getting very close to ending the game from that standpoint. That's quite serviceable. But what's not serviceable is our lack of money. The 200 pounds is not going to permit me to get a critical tile here and I have one two three four five purchases whoop no I didn't count that so I have one two three four purchases and it's 500 pounds just to be talking about the essentials which I need two of and I'm just not going to burn that much reputation so I'm going to go ahead and do a turn here without any money in hand to make a purchase that makes me nervous scavenger doesn't care 16 the jerk comes in and picks up this monument which will go into their scoring tableau I'm making a tough road to hoe for myself so now we'll come back here we're gonna get to a village fair which is something I'm counting on because uh, I'm gonna rotate service here sorry I'm trying to walk and chew gum Take that useful man. I'm going to put that useful man over on the study. Thank you, servants' quarters. I'm going to pick up my point of reputation, and I'm going to get 500 pounds from the village fair along with two points of reputation, which gets me to six. So reputation is not the issue right now. The issue right now is money and its tiles. So I need to put you down for a second and take a look at my deck and see if I can avoid passing. I don't think I can. I most emphatically cannot avoid passing. I have really nothing of great value in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 200 from passing instead of hiring so I can get up to 900. That's going to allow me to make a pretty nice play here because this, the French Garden, is available to me for 800. So put that in there, take 100 back, and put that right there. I will be playing that next turn. I'm at reputation level 6. I feel good about that. I need to make a double purchase um, in real soon. So hopefully with a fresh deck and bringing 6 gentry in, we should have a heck of a turn. And don't scavenge another 15. Well, <laughs> I'm going to have a hell of a time. Uh, surviving this one because this guy's picking off all the monuments. 
So we come to our next turn. I'm sure we're in focus there. And we are going to play that French garden. I'm going to provide service, use the cook again for a point of reputation. I'm going to come down here, and you can see I've got my two good guests. Unfortunately, I only have two prestige guests, which is a little light. I, You know what? I forgot. Didn't I last time? That's probably got a ripple effect in this game. So let's just get to it. 500 here, 700, 800, 900, 900's coming in. I'll put my 100 back and take 1,000. Reputation, I get two points here. I get the admirer bonus here for her being with Viscount Ashwood. So that is a total of 4 plus the cook is 5. So I've reached max reputation. I certainly do not need to worry about that. Now it would be nice to get max max reputation get it up here because then i can use it as a source of money um, but we'll have to wait on that i do have a second level guest and just what i wanted i would have preferred money in the vic uh, victory point card but i'll take the victory point card he is going to be visiting my estate next turn and then we have one final invite here please don't be nasty he's not Colonel Walter Dalrymple is just fine. Put that over there. And we'll break this down and come back for a purchase. I realize it's breaking down and I didn't even take... This is twice. I've already forgotten one prestige guest and now I've forgotten two more. And I mean, that's the big play in the French Garden. And what a beautiful pull that is. So these two are going to be... Oh, we're going to have a great... We might be able to rally and overcome that problem right there next turn. So with my purchase uh, using the $1,000, I'm taking two tiles from the essentials category at $500 a pop. And you're going to be a little surprised, I think, that I'm taking two level two tiles. Um, this suits the guests that I can invite. And this is easy to play, be it that it only requires one person. When I thin my deck out, I should be able to play that on the last turn to close the deal. And then hopefully my new moneyed guests will allow me to get into mmm delicious. So there's my two new tiles. I'm going to scavenge. A seven is going to take the West Saloon. I'm done with that color. It doesn't bother me. As long as it didn't take that prestige monument which I'm eyeing to finish the game. So let's go to our next turn which is going to discount these purchases. Maybe make that a little more accessible. And we are going to go into the breakfast room. We need to rotate service. Forgot about that. I need to increase my reputation for my monument. And there we are having a nice breakfast. I wanted to bring the lady out as well that was a six level with the victory point card, but I can't because I'm using that head housemate and that hall boy would have both been useful in this scenario and I didn't hire him. Um, but she was occupied. So here's what we have. Uh, not, not shabby at all. So we have 300 and 100 is 400 pounds. I'm not using the cook because I had to use my servant's quarters to get the, that valet. So we take our 400 pounds. Uh, we max out on our reputation. And we have a look at two, keep one invite here from the lady of the house. And so she will pass on the pauper. Put that gentleman in there. And we have a victory point card. You know what? That could be big. That could be very, very big. Let's see how the money adds up. I'm just going to break down that later for you. So I have 400. I can get 100, 200 from my reputation without dropping off of max. So I now have 600. Uh, and I do have the useful man to discount. That right there is a thousand. I'm going to do it. So that right there is a thousand. I have 600 and I'm going to add three is 900 and then I'm going to drop below, but I will come back up. Get that back. I'm going to turn that in. And as a result, I'm going to be able to pick up that tile. Outstanding, which means uh, I'm heritage sweet away from finishing my tableau. Let me break down here. 
The scavenging action from the AI really doesn't matter because my tableau is finished, but I could substitute something in there if I wanted to try to improve my scoring. Uh, so I'll roll the... Oh, actually, it's not a waste of time. Son of a gun. <laughs> Just got another victory point card. That's son of a gun. <laughs> ah! All right. So let's go to this turn. We're going to finish, I think, right on time. So we're going to come in here with the Heritage Guest Suite. We're going to rotate the reputation. We are going to come up one there on the reputation wheel for... Oh, no, we're going to go all the way here because we have two monuments now. We do not have one. So we are at max. So we've reached the end stage condition. And right here, we are going to take this footman. We're going to pick a casual guest and double all favors. This is highly underwhelming. But it'll get me... A for reputation up to max, which I'll trade right back and get two money, which gets me one victory point. I'm doing cartwheels there. But I have finished the game on time, and I have not lost. I have not lost um, any points for going over the allotted time to finish. So let's get out the score pad and calculate this one. So looking here at the... Final score, I have 48 for my tableau, which is low. I normally expect to have over 55 on that, and my decision to go cheap here early on maybe would have worked out if I didn't go cheap here late. To have four of my 10 tiles be threes or twos, that's, that's not forgivable, and, and particularly when I pair it with a low gentry score. So 78, no objective cards, Max condition reputation, 106, 18 for my servants, 1 for money, 125, and you can see up when I bring on the screen here, I've already lost 132 to 125, but now I need to add in these here, which is 8 points for the victory point cards, and then 8, and 5 is 13, and 6 is 19, and 8 is 27, 27 and 132. 27 is 159, so I lost 159 to 125. So I have shown you how not to play. This is what great teachers do. Uh, you know, they show you what not to do so that you can prosper. <laughs> I, I, I stand by the old adage for me, which is when I'm using electronics, my brain turns to mush and certainly any tactical ability vanishes. So hopefully you enjoyed the playthrough. Thanks.